which was an indicator of what was going to happen in the last game. So if memory serves here, I would imagine that it grows one again because they still have the bigger towers. Or at least more decorated towers. We don't have a Wisp Arcana, though. This game is over. It's over. Waffles are us really dropping the balls here. Wow. Dropping the ball as the ball with the Wisp. Um, I don't really know what else to say about that one, so I'll just move on. Mossy will be handling the Queen of Pain once again on the mid lane. Had a pretty good game in the last one. Kong this time playing the Timbersaw. We've got Leech Commander playing Hot Salsa. Yeah, strike that, reverse it. Um, and then Ogre Magic will be handled by Remster here. Crystal Maiden. Where is that Crystal Maiden? Over here will be played by number one. Dazzle scouting out the uh, Leech Commander over there will be handled by Chance. We've got Fastest Man Alive, otherwise known as Kariski, playing the Troll Warlord. And then finally... We've got Alfredo on the Templar Assassin Sports Slot playing the Bristleback. All right. So, in terms of how game number one went, uh, Groves High School had a bit of an advantage from the early game, and although Alfredo did do a really good job of trying to make that up, and USS Youth did have a lot of great fights, um, it didn't take as much as the game went on for for Groves High School to both win fights and then get their advantages after. So, um, we'll see if this game has more of the same game plan or if things change up a little bit for each team. Queen of Pain already trying to get a little bit more uh, dominance of the mid lane. Alfredo already seeing the... Are you seeing the refraction chart is getting taken off of him? That's one thing that the dagger is pretty good for. And also Mossy uh, made a pretty special effort to do that. Until Alfredo gets up level 2 and can get a meld to try to dodge the... Um, try to dodge the daggers. This early harass from Mossy is going to be a little bit difficult to deal with. But Alfredo can at least strike back with the side blades. So yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on how the mid lane goes. Meanwhile, on the other ones, it's going to be the Timbersaw versus Bristleback. And Bristleback's already out of a lot of his mana. He does have a Mango. Uh, and he's also got the Crystal Maiden on his side, so, I mean, he really shouldn't be worried too much about that. He just hasn't leveled up the Arcane Aura just yet, so he doesn't have the... He doesn't have the mana yet from the Crystal Maiden, so he might want to hold off on stemming that a little bit much. Mossy getting low at mid. He's not blinking away from Alfredo right now, trying to get the Sideblade procs, but... Not going to find that. Meanwhile, Chance low in the top lane. He doesn't have the Shallow Grave yet. He's going to get blocked in here. That's going to be your... F oh, uh, 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 okay. Ramster picking up the first player is the Ogre Magi. He almost thought he had a little bit of a juke there. And... Mossy's still sitting at the mid lane uh, with very little health. I mean, a very unlucky Sideblade proc, and he could find himself on the wrong end of a... A Templar Assassin kill here. Just trying to get enough gold for the bottle. Oh, this top lane, this top aggressive tri lane is really going to be hurting USS Youth here. And they're going to go over and try to pick up the bounty rune. Or, there's no bounty rune here anymore. Number one walking over there. That's not where you want to be as a Crystal Maiden. And that's another kill going to this Ogre Magi Wisp duo. Didn't really need a whole lot for that one. So Mossy with the bottle at mid, he's gone through all of his charges right now. Alfredo's getting low as well, but he's got some bottle charges. Again, Ignite in the top lane. Hot Salsa trying to chase him down. He's gone for some levels into the overwhelming odds. They're chasing down Kariski a little bit. So 
So sports lot and Kong still doing their thing here at bottom. Uh, Bristleback slightly ahead on the last hits, but man, look at that damage that he takes as the rolling death is used. He really can't hang out here too much against Kong, especially when they are trading hits like that. Like Kong's going to regen. He's got two levels into the uh, reactive armor. So although sports lot can stay alive a little bit with the, the Bristleback passive, he really doesn't want to try to duke it out with Kong too, too much. I mean, Kong's just happy to take all this harass, honestly. All he has to do is wait for Sports Lot to turn his face towards him and then hits him with the Whirling Death. Take down his strength, which is going to affect his last hitting as well. And Kong has a pretty good roll, uh, advantage over that lane right now. Doesn't need too much help at all. Meanwhile, top has been pretty devastated for now. I mean, Kariski's having trouble getting into the lane. He's He does have 20 last hits. Waffles RS will get hit by the uh, Poison Touch. And all right, nice overwhelming. It's going to take a couple of these here as well. Hoss also wants to go in, but the Tether Away has already been used. The Wisp doesn't want to stay there too much longer. It would be really a, a difficult situation for him if he were there. Mosque has again been taken low at the mid lane. No bottle charges at all. This is really just his life right now. Trying to not get hit by a sideway, which he gets one in the face there. Rumster inside the jungle will get hit by the frostbite. Chance hitting with the dazzle touches as well. But Ogre Magi walks pretty fast. And he will swiftly all walk away from the dazzle for now. Where is Kong at? He really does need to get his mana region going, so he's got a soul ring being delivered to him for now. Oh, at mid, Mossy has an Alfredo chasing him down. Doesn't slow down at all by the side traps, the psionic traps, that is. Just trying to do as much as possible here. Here comes the ogre with combo. Alfredo over to the side. His meld strike is down, but the psionic, yeah, psionic trap making things really difficult for. Groves High School right now and he really didn't need a whole lot of help. He just used one psionic trap. Got a hit on three people, slowing them down enough that he just kind of walked away down towards the bottom rune. And he gets a regen rune for his efforts as well. So all in all that probably helped Alfredo more than anything. I'm sure he had to walk around, but he got a regen rune for his efforts, so I would think that's more than worth it. At bottom, Kong's been chased down quite a bit by Sports Lot. One more set of quills would have done it, but Kong still uh, tanky as ever with the reactive armor. And a bit difficult to kill. Kariski looking for some aggression at top. Reaching Bender is trying to make up the last hit deficit up against Kariski for now. What is our Bristleback bat at? He's kind of low on mana, but yeah, that's just what the, the Arcane Aura does. I mean, and as soon as Timursal gets back into the lane, he's going to still have those quills chasing him down. We do also have the, I believe that's an International Immortal. We're in Sports Lot here. So he just puts out some nice looking snot whenever he's chasing somebody down. I don't think I've seen nicer looking snot in my life. I don't know if that's not anymore either. Viscous nasal goo. Uh, meanwhile, at bottom, Queen of Pain chasing down Sports Lot here. Kong is going to go forward. It uh, doesn't have anything to slow him down. They're going to get the Sonic Wave out onto him, and they really want to chase the Bristle back. Uh, Whirling Death is going to miss. The Scream of Pain misses as well. Kong, he's not getting married he he here at all with all these misses, and uh, <laughs> Shallow Grave is going to keep the Bristle back alive. Now, Chance is here. Another TPM from number one. He's going to keep the Queen of Pain in place for a couple more seconds, but another Scream of Pain is going to do it. Blink out if it's available in four seconds. Uh, Wisp just underneath the tower for a bit long there. Probably not the most auspicious of opportunities there. Mozzie wants to get aggressive on the Crystal Maiden. Really no love lost for the uh, Crystal Maiden at all. And she gets a haste rune. Oh, no. 
This could be bad. And this was scouted out as well by the Psionic Trap. Mossy over to the side knows exactly where number one is. Is going to chase him down. Frostbite available. Gets it out onto Queen of Pain, who's going to be stuck here for a little bit longer. Now gets the Blinker over to the side. She went through all of those turrets of the bottle right away. Not saving those at all. Kong into the jungle right now. Still working on his build up towards the uh, arcane boots look at that nice alfredo getting a stack off on the ancient camp should help him when he decides to farm that up to get the well i don't know are the the blink dagger or the desolator it's gonna be a desolator first from him since that's what he has in his quick buy he's gonna go the damage route should be pretty helpful against things like the timber Salt and the Luigi commander during the duel Sports Watch starting to chase down Kong once again. Uh, if you're Kong, you do want to try to make sure that you have the uh, reactive armor stacks going so you can deal with this bristle back a little bit better. Um, if he doesn't have that, these clothes are going to be pretty devastating to him. Passing Man Alive trying to get away. And Ramster doesn't get enough uh, vision of him to stop that TP. Troll to bottom. It's not starting to chase down Kong. He's going to see Kuriski here. He'll just quickly get the timber chain away I should be taking a look at our our overall net worth Templar Assassin at the top of that one so I would imagine it's going to be a fairly quick uh, desolator from her did she she did go boots first right yeah she got her power treads up so she's not completely rushing it it's gonna be a little bit more survivable before uh, she does actually get to the desolator And she's the first one to level 10 as well. I definitely trust Alfredo in this sort of position. Uh, he's got his stock going there. <laughs> Look at all those acolytes. You got the tails waving around. Probably the most annoying ancient creep in the game. But still, it's only a very slight lead in terms of net worth for USS Youth. Mossy, underneath the tower, way too aggressive against Alfredo. Meanwhile, Hot Salsa trying to get the last hit on these really pesky can uh, catapults now. They're not cannons. Cannons are something else. But they're really difficult to kill now. And I hope that he's played enough Dota to make up for that difference. It's kind of interesting to me how, how Hot Salsa, Hot Salsa has been... Uh, playing this lane it's almost like the, the support two does doesn't exist at all he's just kind of doing his own thing while they happen to get kills around him sports slot now at the vanguard even more difficult to kill even more snot or even more chances to get some snot off kong just goes in puts a rolling death out and it gets some quills in the back in the face so it's not really the Hospitable situation that you would expect for a Timbersaw or hope for as a Timbersaw. Just uses all his mana there. He does have the Soul Ring up. So I guess it's fine to, to keep going for things for like that. Ogre Magi at level 4 in the mid lane. Trying to get up to his multicast. Queen of Pain is going to make her way over there and well says uh, I'll take some levels too. I'll take some gold as well. Builds up the Veil of Discord. Very similar build to last game so far. See if she goes for the Aghanim Scepter after that as well. Or uh, actually it was a Yule Scepter before that in the last game. Vlad's build up for Troll Warlord. And Legion could be stepping into a bad situation at top. Wisp is going to get caught out. Or does it? Um, Legion Mater being healed up. Um, when you use the press the attack, here comes Queen of Pain. Uh, yeah. Easy win for, uh, Troll Warlord. He got, also got the Shallow Grave from Chance. Chance trying to get out. Another Scream of Pain is not going to be used. They have to be worrying about Kariski, who turns it around. Will get killed off by the Queen of Pain, but... Uh, Dazzle already got out of that fight with a great... The Great Shallow Grave... 
out onto the troll warward. You just kind of put it out there, make it so the Legion Commander never wins the dual sports slot, taken low by Kong. Timber Chain comes through, and the balls end up taken out. The bristle back at bottom, taking way too much damage there from Timbersaw. But still, Templar Assassin, top of the net worth for now. Going right through the creeps in the mid lane. Very close to the Desolator, and maybe she'll have a little bit more success with that than she did with the Shadow Fiend in game number one. I mean, we're used to Alfredo farming up well, but just didn't seem to have enough of an impact in the last game. Uh, in terms of towers, we've not actually seen anything taken so far by either team. I wouldn't really say that we have a tower pushing lineup in bottom at all. Uh, I think the, I guess the real threat is on USS Youth. They've got uh, Troll Warward and uh, Templar Assassin when she gets the Desolator. So <coughs> I would think that that is where we have most of our towers going down. And where we should be seeing some more concerted pushes for USS Youth. In terms of tower pushing, like you don't really have as much of that on the side of Softy Sand Kings. Wow. Well, it, it does help if the Dazzle is not there in order to uh, get some kills with a duel. Oh my god. That is one dead wisp. Very easy kill for USS Youth. You know, it is kind of close to the tier 1 tower. Maybe they thought they could have even fought there, but with the Wisp just dying so quickly, it probably would have been a really tough ask for Groves to make any kind of contest there. Not even giving that Wisp a chance to, to get a tether out. Blink Dagger now built up for each commander, so the duel should come a little bit easier for her. Kong now over at top. Fastest man alive trying to get out of here, and there's no interrupt from Salty Sand Kings at all. The only interrupts they have is a duel and a fire blast. And neither of those abilities were there for Groves High School. Once they're getting chased down at mid, he can start taking a huge amount of damage, and yeah, he just turns around with the ignite. Which doesn't really stop Alfredo at all. He was slowed down by the Psionic Trap and killed off very quickly because of the decreased armor. Here comes Mossy though up against Chance. Shalgrim is going to be there. Chance tries to get out. He's going to make it. Waffles R.S. now has to try to get away from Alfredo. Um, with the Psionic Trap, he can't get the tether away. Meanwhile... Uh, they're going to get the duel out on the temper. That's not who you want to duel, or is it? Do they have the damage? Looks like Alfredo has the damage, and another refraction. Turns around with a double kill. Can he get the third? Mossy just trying to break through that one. Here comes a Chakram, and they have vision of Alfredo. Yeah, they got more than enough. Number one with the freezing field will get stunned up by the fire blast, and they have more than enough to deal with the Chris Minion as well. They turn around for a two for two. Taking out the highest net worth on the board, so I would have to say that that is worth it for Groves High School by about 700 gold. Tier 1 tower about to be taken by Gross High School as well. Their second tower of the game. As Sportslot was trying to push bottom, but didn't get too far with that at all. Queen of Pain now with the Yule Scepter. We'll put it into the backpack trying to get the most utility out of the shrine usage, which is a little bit more important after its slight nerf in 7.06. It's had a couple of slight nerfs over the past few patches so seems like we're at a bit of an impasse right now Mossy pushing down the mid lane he's going to be going for his customary Aghanim Scepter once again it's a little bit disappointing, actually, to me that he's not really changing his build up at all from the the first game. I feel like the the goals in this one are a little bit different than the last one. Like last one, uh, it was brought up that he could have benefited 
a bit earlier from a, a BKB. Which might have been true, but they ended up doing well enough. I, again, feel like this time the physical damage is a bit much. So maybe he would, although the Yule Scepter does help, um, maybe it's a bit more cost effective to be going for the, the Ghost Scepter and then something a little bit different. I almost feel like his team needs him to be more in the in the damage role this time as well, so I don't know, physical damage might be more on the on the menu for Mossy later. Right now, Groves waiting for the courier to make its way towards them. It's only got a point booster. Uh they are smoked right now. Uh, both teams could end up smoking. They're going to go up to the high ground. The scan catches him out. Alfredo's lying in wait here. Hot sells it up to the high ground. He has fastest man alive right there. He's not used to duel just yet. Freezing field is going to happen. And Hot sells it. It's a massacre up on the high ground. Remster also hit in the face by that melt strike. And the only person to get out again is Mossy. Uh, <laughs> just says, sorry team. I'm going to leave. I'm going to get my body out of here. Yeah, that was not a good place for Salty Sand Kings to be at all. And uh, with the Desolator on Alfredo as well as a whole lot of minus armor, they're going to go right for Roshan. They've also got the Viscous Nasal go Goo to decrease this and a Medallion of Courage on Dazzle. So look how fast that goes down. Ridiculous from USS Youth. Dagger put on to Alfredo. He doesn't manage to dodge that. Mossy will take the Refraction off of Alfredo, but... Uh, it's going to be pretty slow, actually, and doesn't really mean too much anyway because, um, I mean, they're not fighting. So Alfredo's going to have another refraction anyway. Do, do, do. In any case, we've got a bristle back up to a solar crest. So they have both the medallion and the solar crest on USS Youth right now. Uh, our net worth is 6,000 in favor of the Dire. CXP. Or not. Frick me. It's not CXP. It's just regular XP. Um, <coughs> you didn't hear me say that. Uh, 7,500 in favor of USS Youth. Oh, in the jungle, Tempor Assassin could be a lurk in here. Bounty Rune. Come on, dude. Pick up the Bounty Rune. Well, after that Bounty Rune is completely value for Alfredo, who will get dueled. And uh, the duel has been won. That's the Aegis gone. And I don't really think... Oh, blink away. Can they follow this up? Yeah, they absolutely can. Alfredo in some trouble. He's doing as much damage as possible to these guys, and it's actually pretty substantial. But eventually, Mossy will take the kill. They get a duel win. They get the Aegis. And they also get the... Temporary Assassin killed, who is still the highest net worth on the board right now. It's pretty value there for Groves. I think that was just a lapse in judgment from Temporary Assassin. For some reason, thought that she was on the right side of the map. When indeed she was on the wrong side of the map. Alright, so we've got a Shadow Blade now on the Troll World. Haven't really kept up with him as much lately. He seems to be working towards Assange and Yasha. And Templar Assassin. Getting a Lincolns now after a Desolator Blink. Building this up very quickly. Meanwhile, Mossy. He's 800 gold from his Agonim Scepter. And Kong. Well, he has a point booster. But it would seem that he's going for. A Heaven's Halberd first. Trying to punish Alfredo for not going for a BKB. Oh, fastest man alive up to the high ground. Mossy just kind of sits there. Uh, did he get anything denied? Luckily not. That was close. Um, oh, no, he did get the point booster denied. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, that's really unfortunate. That's probably the least fortunate thing that could have happened there. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, Groves. Tower, 
That's... I don't know. I don't know. I need a, a replay there or something, because that was... It's a lot of devastating, devastation in one place, and honestly, very slow reactions from Mossy. It seemed like he didn't really know what was going on. The troll started hitting him in the face, and he was like, oh, okay. Now the Wisp way too far up. One more bit of close from Sports is going to clean him up. That should secure the Tier 3 tower for USS Youth and possibly the Racks. Queen of Pain respawning in a couple seconds now. But yeah, with the Desolator and all this damage from Alfredo, they are very easily able to take one melee Racks. And get back out. Sports lot backing away. And this is a really tanky member of USS Youth right now. Honestly, if I were them, I might try to initiate off of it. But Alfredo has already escaped the scene of the crime. Sports slot has a lot of help here. Like Groves can chase this for a while, but they're gonna take a lot of damage from the quills, and he also has a dazzle behind him as well. Like this is honestly a great situation for USS Youth to try to fight, but no, here comes the the duel and the damage from Kong. There's so many planes crashing and burning here, like, this is weird. Hot Salsa with the blade mail, seems like Alfredo doesn't even worry about it. Remster getting taken low. They'll get the kill on Templar Assassin, she's dead for 70 seconds now. I honestly don't know what's going on with this game. Like, if they had initiated when Bristleback was being initiated on so long ago he just soaring himself down to zero health pretty much uh if they had initiated a while back when bristleback was just being focused for some reason they had a much better chance of actually winning there but instead they just kind of chain feed and here comes the troll warward ready to go towards moss he throws out the whirling axes troll uh, going right for the timber cell he's in so much trouble he'll end up dying there to the tower. Now Remster will get slowed down as well. It's just back the other way. It's a huge lack of discipline from the teams. Seven hundred gold back the way of USS Youth. I mean, I was this past couple of series of events has been really uncharacteristic of good play, honestly. They they surely have good team fights, but. The time in between is where these teams really have to buckle down. It just seems like some of them are being a bit undisciplined in the, the way that they're backing up. I mean, I was calling for them to fight in the other one, but they have to be coordinated as a team. Templar Assassin trying to go for the Weeping Minder right now. You do not want to try to duel that girl. Yeah, she's going to blink further into the trees. Meanwhile, top tower is being pushed in by USS Youth. We'll have another creep wave arriving in a couple seconds. So with the, without the Templar Assassin, it's a bit more difficult to take these towers down. But they should have more than enough with their Bristleback. They'll just kind of back up a little bit there. Uh, they still have the Templar Assassin at the bottom there, so they can do some split pushing action. Fastest man alive. Oh, so close to picking out Remster there. A, a battle trance used and Mossy can't be there. What in tarnation? And now the relocate comes in? I am so confused. Alfredo's just walking you through it. Yeah, I don't know, honestly. Wisp decides to leave the Timbersaw over at bottom and he's really needed for this base defense. I am. This is weird. Templar Assassin still at bottom can take down a tier 2 tower. Another full set of rags down? What is going on? Just a lot of bad decisions. Sports slot now going for the range rags in mid. The rest of his team is there. He's going to have a huge amount of armor right now. Timber Saw is going to die. And he does have buyback, but his Wisp is dead as well. Alfredo makes his way into the base. They'll take down the final set of rags in mid. And now they'll go for. The tier 3 at bottom. I just They'll buy back. 8 seconds left on Queen of Pain's respawn. I think this was just a pretty heavy outdraft. Salty Sand King's really not having enough clout on the physical damage place. And we'll see if Weeping Miner can even get this duel off on the Dazzle. Doesn't even get the win on it. Sports slot may die in the base. USS Youth were like, we're not going to lose another fight because we didn't back up. We're just going to back up right now. Honestly, that might have been the time to fight. 
especially with as strong as the troll warrior is. He's not really waiting on any of his cooldowns either, like maybe the silver edge. But Oh well, they got mega creeps. I should not be a Debbie Downer when USS Youth have the mega creeps. I just think that maybe they Maybe they should have uh, pushed their advantage a little bit harder there. So now Kong versus Mega Creeps. He's going to get the Silver Edge on him. His reactive armor is still going here. Apparently that's not broken, but oh well. They'll drop the Freezing Field for this one. Rams are in a lot of trouble. They should be able to take out another one. These guys don't have buyback. And Hot sells it into the fight. Here comes Mossy. Like, they have to fight here. Crystal Maiden will get the Shallow Grave. And now... Uh, Lee Commander's dead. Mossy about to fall as well. That will be the GG. Groves High School lose game number two. USS Youth proved to be the game two masters here. They also won game number two against Dunlap. But uh, we'll be going to a deciding game number three here in this best of three set lower bracket in the high school Star League spring playoffs. Loser out, winner in. We're down to a best of one in this best of three series. As uh, it will all come down to this. Can Groves bring in the reins for game number three? Or will USF Youth continue with their momentum? Only time will tell. We'll be right back in just a few moments. <laughs> 